station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Station is ready. CNN Digital Studios, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is CNN Digital Studios. How do you hear me? One. I hear you loud and clear. All right. Uh, ready to speak? I'm ready. How are you today? I'm well. Uh, so what I'm going to do for you is we have a program called CNN iReport, and we took a bunch of user-submitted questions. And I'm either going to try and play them into this phone or just read them to you. And, okay. And the first, uh, the first thing I'd like to ask you to do is could you just introduce yourself, tell me where you are and what you do, Sure. My name is Steve Swanson. I'm a NASA astronaut. Right now I'm living aboard the International Space Station, which is in orbit around the Earth, uh, about 250 miles up. I'm in the uh, U.S. laboratory at this moment, where we do a lot of the science up here. We also have a Japanese laboratory and a European laboratory, along with a Russian segment. So there's lots of science going on. Uh, that's pretty much uh, my extent of my world right now. Great. Uh, the first question comes from a darling little seven-year-old girl, Sophia Bossy. And, if I, and I, can I just ask that if I read the question to you, can you respond as if these people are asking you, please? I'll give it a try. Thank you. All right, so this is Sophia, and she says, Hello, astronaut Swanson. My name is Sophia, and I'm from Michigan. What does it feel like when you blast off from Earth and go into outer space? That's a good question, Sophia. One, it's a fun experience. It's kind of like a, a roller coaster ride in a way. In the beginning of the roller coaster ride where you're going up that steep part, click, 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 and it's a little tension builds. It's great, and then boom, you go. Uh, it, it's, a, it's just a wonderful feeling. You can feel the acceleration of the engines just pushing you down into their seat as you take off. And the whole thing lasts about eight and a half minutes. And after eight and a half minutes, we're going 17,500 miles an hour, and we're up in Earth's orbit spinning around. Okay, thank you. The next one, uh, another uh, adorable little five-year-old. His name is Brockton. Brockton. And Brockton says, Hi, Steve. My name is Brockton. How do you exercise in space? I wish I could go to space with you. Bye. Well, Brockton, I wish you could come up here, too. You'd love it up here. Uh, for exercise, uh, we have uh, three different types of equipment. We have a treadmill, we have an exercise bike, and we have a resistive exercise device, which is like lifting weights back on Earth. Since we can't actually lift weights here, things float, so it's tough to lift weights that way. So our engineers have come up with this new machine that makes it just like lifting weights. And so we spend about two hours every day working out to keep ourselves in shape, to make sure we don't have any muscle loss or any bone loss. It's very important for us when we get back so that we're healthy. Okay, let's keep answering that question. Is there any way that you can demonstrate the, the, the lack of gravity that you mentioned? Well, sure. One, you know, the microphone will float here if I just let it go. And then uh, I can do the same thing. I can do the... Those are a couple of different demonstrations. Uh, you know, when we're working together, we all toss things to each other. So if somebody's like, where, where the camera is, where you are, and I want to hand him something, I can just give him a little push, and it'll go right to them. And that's the way we get, hand things back and forth to each other. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Let's do, okay, so, 
let's stay in that. Can you just so that we're as if we're still talking to Brockton? So could you be like um, exercise is different here because we don't have any gravity. Let me show you how. And you don't need to do demonstrate it again. Just say those words, and then I can edit that all that together, please. All right, just to make sure I got that down correctly, sorry. Um, so exercise is different up here. We don't have any gravity. Perfect. Was that, was that what you needed? Okay, thanks. Yeah, let's do that one more time. I think I spoke over you. No problem. Say again the line. Exercise is different up here. We don't have gravity. Exercise is different up here. We don't have gravity. Wonderful. All right. Next question. This is you got you got a lot of fans in the Philippines apparently. You got a couple of these, but uh, this this guy's name is uh, Rummel. That's Rummel, and he says, Steve, what do you think is the biggest accomplishment that you have done so far in being an astronaut? Well, that is a difficult question. The biggest accomplishment that I have done. Well, for me personally, probably doing a spacewalk is the biggest accomplishment. However, it's always a team on the ground and up here doing all the work. It's never just one person doing the work that we do. It takes many, many people all over the world to make this thing happen, to make the science happen, to keep the station running. So it's hard to measure just one person's contributions. But if it were just, you know, if you tried to, for me, I think the most rewarding and the hardest things we've done are the spacewalks. Is there a specific memory or a scene from any of the spacewalks that you would care to share? <laughs> Let me try to come up with one. Uh, yes. Um, well, the best part, I think, uh, not the best part, one of the great parts of a spacewalk is just the view. As you're working out there on, outside the station, uh, you have a whole visor with his open to what you can see outside, which is not like here where you have a window you're looking out. So you, the view that you have, you more feel like you're out in that environment. You're there, you're, you're feeling it. And then the view you get of the whole Earth, all of what you can see out there is just amazing. I mean, sometimes it just takes your breath away and I have to stop the work I'm doing and just take it all in just to, just to, to understand it all. Great, thank you. All right, here's another one uh, from the Philippines. This is Joel. Uh, Joel, Joel, hello, Steve. This is Joel from the Philippines, but studying in Rome. Many of us will never have your experience as an astronaut in space, and I'm sure after all these years of being an astronaut, you have so many images in space. If you were to share with us just one image, what would it be? Just one image of, from space. That's another difficult question, because it's so beautiful to look down on the Earth. Uh, all the different spots you can see are just, it's so wonderful. But for me, I guess the things that stand out the most to me are in the oceans or the seas where there are shallow water like the Caribbean or the Maldive Islands, where it's these uh, small islands with, with uh, shallow reefs around them, and it's that difference in the colors, the deep blue of the ocean and the, the uh, uh, turquoise blue of the shallow water, and then the island right there and all that. That together just is one picturesque uh, scene. Okay. Uh, here's another one from the, the Philippines. This is Jarek. It's Eric with a J. Jarek. Hello, I'm Jarek from Manila, Philippines, and I'm just curious. How do you keep in touch with your family or friends when you're in space? Jarek, we have multiple ways to keep in touch with our family and friends. We have email. Uh, we also have a, a voice over internet phone call system, which we can call down, they can't call up, but we still do that on a regular basis. And once a week, I get to have a video conference with my family, which is a wonderful thing to do. So with, through those three things, we get to stay in touch with uh, our families and friends, and it really helps us out here to have that uh, feeling of uh, still being part of something like that. 
And here's another one from Jarek. He says, I'm just curious. What do you think is the best space movie of all time? The best space movie. Well, that's a tough one. I think I'd probably have to go with Apollo 13, though. That's still one of my favorites. Okay. Uh, Tim Johnson from Phoenix, Arizona. He's a bit of a NASA wonk, I think. My question is, do you think NASA will ever build a reusable spacecraft, such as the space shuttle, to transport humans into space? Or are we going to be relying now on other countries or private companies like SpaceX? Thank you. Well, it's a tough question to see the future of what NASA will do. Uh, I think in the short-term future, uh, we do have that planned out. We will be using commercial craft like SpaceX or possibly Boeing. Uh, Sierra Nevada also, and Sierra Nevada is, is a reusable vehicle. So there's one right now that's on the drawing plans right now, or drawing board. It has plans, and it's a possibility, and that is reusable. Uh, the Orion uh, spacecraft that NASA is building is not reusable also. It's another capsule. And, of course, uh, we are relying on the Russians until we get one of ours done. But I do hope in the near future we'll have at least a U.S. vehicle. And then after that, I do believe uh, going back to some sort of reusable water uh, will help bring the cost downs and will help make it more affordable for everybody else to come up here. Great. Uh, we got a whole fifth grade classroom in San Diego. Um, so first of all, there's a clip of them, and they're all sitting there, and they wave, and they go, Hi, astronaut Steve. So you could respond to that. Do you know the name of the school? It is, yeah, uh, Fletcher Elementary School in San Diego, the fifth grade class. Hello, fifth grade class of Fletcher Elementary School in San Diego. How are you today? Great. And then one of the students, Alyssa, she says, I'm Alyssa Gomez, and I'm wondering what do you do with your free time in space? Alyssa, that's a good question. We don't get a lot of free time in space, but when we do, the number one thing we all like to do is look out the window. It's such a beautiful thing to do, and uh, the looking down on Earth is just a fantastic way to spend your time. Uh, otherwise, we will try to stay in contact with our families. We can email them or, phone, or call them on the phone. Uh, and we possibly uh, maybe watch a TV show or two just to relax. But that's really how we spend our off time. Okay, uh, here's another one from one of the students, Eric Davis. I'm Eric Davis, and are you scared to start your flight with all of the dangers? Well, Eric, uh, I'm not really scared. I don't think most of us are scared. We know there's are dangers involved, but uh, we've also been trained to handle all the, the possible scenarios that have come up. Uh, we think we're prepared for them. So it's really, we feel confident that we'll be able to do uh, the mission uh, safely and efficiently and successfully. So I don't think the idea that uh, we're, we're maybe afraid, it may be a little bit more tension like during launch or something like that, but just like as you would that same kind of feeling if you're going on a roller coaster, that feeling before you go, you maybe feel a little bit apprehensive. But we also know it's all going to be fine. That's what we, uh, we believe that. Thank you. Okay, this is Jose from Colombia. Hi, I'm Jose from South America. I would like to know, how do you go to the bathroom? I mean, how do you deal with your bathroom needs when you are in space? Thank you. Hey, that's always a good question, Jose. Um, so we do have a toilet up here, and it looks somewhat similar to a toilet down on Earth. Um, the, one of the big differences, of course, is, uh, is we have to contain everything. So uh, when you go ahead and uh, you want to urinate, we actually do that into a funnel that has a suction on it. You think of it as a, a wet vacuum. It sucks the air and uh, liquids into it. It saves the liquid into a tank, and it shoots the air out the other side. It works actually quite well. For the other eye side, um, we just have a big uh, container 
It also has airflow helping to keep the airflow going out and uh, out through and out to one direction. And we sit on that with little plastic inserts, uh, like little bags, and use those and uh, fill those up and then tuck it into the, uh, the can and close the can back up. It's not a very sophisticated design, but it works well. Okay. Uh, this is Deborah from Houston. And uh, she'd like to thank you for doing the interview. After watching the film Gravity that I absolutely loved, I thought it was amazing. I was wondering if it even equates to what it's like in space for you and your experiences. Does life imitate art or does art imitate life? Thank you. That's a good question with the movie Gravity. I think the best thing that Gravity did was the the cinematography of that movie and how it showed what it's like to be in space and the views that it showed was really close to what we have up here. So that was a fantastic uh, analogy for what's going on up here. Of course, it was a movie and the plot uh, was just based off of fiction. So uh, that's to be expected for a movie. It wasn't based off the fact of how it really operates up here, but that's okay. It was a great movie and that cinematography was fantastic. Okay, uh, here's one from Indonesia. Hi, my name is Sitra from, Indone from Sitra from Indonesia. My question is, what is another perk of being an astronaut other than the app opportunity to live in outer space? Well, that's a good question. I think for me, the perks I like best when I'm not in space is when I'm back at home in Houston, uh, we do train in uh, T-38 jets, which I love to do, and also we get to uh, work out on company time, which I like to work out too. So those, are for me, are the biggest perks. Okay, great. Uh, those are all the questions I had for you. Thank you. Do you mind just, uh, you know, kind of signing off and thanking everyone for their questions? Any words of wisdom you'd like to share with them as well? Any words of wisdom? Well, I don't really have words of wisdom, but I can sign off no problem. Thank you. Great. Thank you all for your questions. I really great. appreciate them. They were great questions. And this is Steve Swanson signing off from the International Space Station. Have a great day. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Connor. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, CNN Digital Studios. Thanks. Station, we are now resuming uh, operational audio communications.